Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Andrew, and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So today, we're back working on the pole barn house. Let me show you what we got going on. All right, so in the last episode, we finished up the attic floor joist up here. We've got them all in place, and I'm very happy about that. That means the heavy lifting is done for a while. So now what we have to do is we have all these kind of just butted together. So that obviously isn't gonna work. This wall could still technically move even though it's bolted and screwed and nailed and everything else to a bunch of other walls. But we wanna get these two plates tied together so they can never shift, never move. Let me show you what the plans call for here. All right, so this is our load bearing center wall right here that I just showed you. And it shows the uh, two ceiling joists actually spliced together or butted together. And uh, this calls for in the engineering plans a 24 inch overlap plate. And it says uh, splice above the load bearing wall. So we've got our two rafters, or excuse me, two uh, ceiling joists spliced together. And we're gonna splice them with that plate. We also have to install those hurricane clips which is these right here that you see on the outside edge everywhere. So let me address a couple of questions that everybody's had. A lot of people wanna know why my joists are joined the way they are. Well, it's simple. It's because engineering called for it. And I even emailed my engineer and asked as well. But a lot of people were very curious as to why. Let me grab two pieces of wood and show you. All right, so let's just say if this were the two uh, ceiling joists right there that we've got butted together, a lot of people wanna know why I did not overlap them like that and then nail them well again i'm going to do exactly what my inspector told me to do he said if you follow your engineered plans you know basically i can't fail you on much of nothing obviously there's codes and all that you can but he said follow the plans so i reached out to my engineer and asked about you know budding or whatever the plan said and his response was stick with the plans that he wanted them overlap with a 24 inch plate just like it calls for and he gave me a couple different options there he said, I can either do a two by eight wood plate on the side, which is what I'm gonna do. I feel like that's the strongest. He says, or we can rip down and use a 24 inch uh, five eighths or three quarter inch plywood plate. He recommended I screw if I did the plywood. We're gonna do two by eight scabbed on the side. I'll show you that in just a second. We're gonna screw it to kind of tighten everything up, but the plans call for, let me show you that. All right, so these plans call for a specific nail pattern and it wants five nails on either side. So we're gonna do that at a very minimum, but you can see the pattern right there that it's calling for. So, like I said, I'm just gonna do what the inspector said. Stick with your plans and you can't go wrong. The engineer has rated it a certain way, so that's what we're gonna do. So ultimately what we're doing, like I said, we're just keeping everything from separating. Uh, the hurricane clips keep stuff from lifting in the future, although again, the roof is attached to nothing, so there's no lift here. The roof could literally blow off this house and the walls and everything would still be sitting here. So some of this stuff is a bit questionable, but it is what it is. I'm sticking to the plans. So we got quite a few of them to join together. Let's go ahead and get started on that. We got to cut a bunch of 24 inch plates. We'll get up and screw them, which will get a lot of these twists and bows out of this wood. I mean, look right here. They're doing what they want. These long runs of wood do that. So I'm looking forward to getting these straightened up with some screws. And then we're going to put the nails in, which is what we is required for, uh, for the structural here. Screws are not recommended. Uh, I'm just doing that to kind of tighten things up. But then we'll do the nails as plans call for. All right, so what I'm doing here, you see me adjusting my saw out. I've made my 24 inch mark on this board. Got my saw blade right to where it's gonna cut my 24 inch plate. And the reason I moved my saw around in this, because I'm going to make a stop right here. So that's the good thing about these miter saw tables right here. You can adjust all these arms in and out and this flip over plate right here lock everything in so now every time I throw a board up here and run it to this stop it's automatically at 24 inches because I this is not critical cuts here I just want to go 24 inches or slightly over and I've got to make a bunch of repetitious cuts 17 of them to be exact this is a perfect time to use this feature I've never really used it on the show or told y'all about it I really like to measure all my measurements to make sure they're precise 
but for something like this, this is a non-critical measurement. Like I said, this has to be a minimum of 24 inches. This is a good way to just throw a board up, run it, when it bumps, cut. Now I don't have to use a pencil or a tape measure every single time and I can blow through these cuts. Now it's critical that I keep checking this center wall the whole way down because now is my last opportunity once I plate these before I put the hurricane straps on to get this wall truly plumb. As of right now, it looks really good on the level, but I'll check it every so often because as I'm up there nailing and moving around, I could shift the wall. But for the most part, the wall is not going anywhere because it's already attached to these other walls running this direction. But there's still areas like door frames and other large openings that can shift a little. Like I said, now's, now's the time to get it perfect. Attach it up there, then I'm done. Now we're gonna have to listen to the music of the fan again today. It's already burning up hot.
Now I know a lot of y'all are wondering what the heck just happened with this video. We went from a house build to what is this guy doing? But welcome to my life. That's what the channel is all about. So while I'm working on the house today, Tiffany has asked me to smoke some ribs. We haven't done ribs in a long time. Thought I'd include y'all with that. So I'm taking my lunch break right now. Just got done putting up all those joists, all the tie plates, straps, everything. Good time to take a break. Go ahead and get the smoker started, get the ribs prepped. A lot of y'all like watching smoking anyways, and y'all have asked me to uh, do some more. Just figured I'd include it in this video instead of making one of its own. Don't worry, we're going to get back out and work on the house in just a minute. Alright, so all I have done is just put a little bit of coals down there. I like to do that, a little bit of charcoal. That'll help me go ahead and get a coal bed started. Put some chunk of this beautiful cherry in there. It is super dry now. I need to get some more split up, so we got to do another splitting episode very soon. And my hickory is probably getting close to being dried out. Wish I had some of that today, so I need to check that. A lot of people keep asking me about wood splitting videos. We'll get one. We'll get one coming soon. It's hard to get motivated, though, when it's so hot. So put a couple of these chunks on top. I'll light all this and uh, let it basically just turn into a coal bed, and we'll start the whole cooking process. It looks like she bought a huge pack of just regular spare ribs. I love baby backs, but we're gonna cook what we got. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I cannot stand this membrane on the bottom of my ribs. So I'll usually try to take a little knife or something and lift them up, however, they, goodness gracious, this rib has so much extra on it. I ain't never seen ribs with this much extra just meat and fat on them, my goodness. So I'll take a knife and just try to get it under that membrane and, you know, kind of get it lifted up. And if you're lucky, you can kind of peel it all off. Oh, it ain't wanting to play nice. If you've ever had ribs and you just felt like, man, these things are chewy, that's most likely why you didn't get the membrane off the backside. Now you've got all that meat. It's nice and exposed. It's hard to break this down. Clean these ribs up because I have never seen ribs that needed this much trimming. So people are always asking me in my videos, what's the white knives you use? These are cheap old Dexter knives. I get them off of Amazon or my local fishing store. They work great for trimming up meat, for doing fish, which is what they're really built for. But most of them are like $20. They hold a really good edge for a stainless knife. I mean, they're not the world's best, but uh, they just hold up. I really enjoy these knives. Been using them for a long, long time. All right, so I got the oh, majority of the membrane off, a lot of that fat trimmed up. I mean, of course, you want to leave some fat, but there's just a crazy amount and a little bit of that little loose, floppy skin and kind of cartilage-looking material. So uh, we'll finish letting the smoker heat up to temp, and we'll go ahead and put a rub on this. I'm going to keep it very basic today. We'll put it on the smoker for probably a couple hours to get some good flavor in it, then I'm going to wrap it full. Tiffany loves her ribs falling apart. Me, personally, I like for it to have some bite and pull, but... Tiffany's gonna get her way today. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple today because I've got so much other stuff going on. But Tiffany's favorite rub is this Grill Mate's Applewood Rub. And you can put it on quite thick on something like this. So I'm targeting around 250 degrees at great level. I'll watch that and choke my fire back till we get there. I'm gonna let these smoke for a couple of hours. That should give them plenty of flavor. And I'm gonna take them off, wrap them in full, let them go another couple hours till they're just literally falling off the bone, just like she likes.
So we interrupt the house building one more time. It's been right at two hours, so there should be plenty of flavor in that thin cut of meat right there. Um, would have been a good time to spritz with some apple cider vinegar or apple juice. I just wasn't taking the time to run back and forth and do that today. It was already distracting me enough from the house just to come over here and stoke the fire every so often. So uh, I didn't really go with any spritz today. But that uh, rub that we put on, it's got a lot of brown sugar and other stuff in it. So it, it works out perfectly fine. Sometimes I spritz, a lot of times I do not. Let's take a look at this. Oh yeah, it's already breaking down. I can already see some of the fat. Look at that, it's nice and sticky. So the fat is starting to break down. Good enough, I was mainly looking to get flavor in it. So I'm gonna wrap it in a couple of layers of full. Put that right back on there. Now you could stick it in the oven at this point. We don't have an oven. We live in a camper, nothing that'll fit that. So I'm just gonna keep the grill about 250 degrees, should be perfectly fine. I'm not even worried about a probe or temperature of the meat because I know we're gonna cook it well past done because uh, we're gonna to get to the point that I wanna see the meat pulling back from the bone. And normally that's very high temp to do that. It'll be plenty safe enough to eat. So I'm gonna let this go another couple of hours and come out here and take a peek at it, maybe poke through the tinfoil and if I feel like something's sliding into it, like a fork, real easy, we know it's good. I might open the pull up, take a peek. If I see the meat pulling back and bones starting to stick out, I know we're good, we're perfect. Well, we have our first 
attic decking or flooring up. But I ain't gonna lie, I am beat. I am absolutely beat from lifting all this stuff coming up here. But it's one of them days where it looks like I didn't accomplish a whole lot. But every single uh, ceiling joist now has been plated together, strapped, nailed, screwed. I mean, I spent quite a while attaching those above and beyond what the uh, engineered plans called for. So, should be good. I am shocked at how good this feels walking on it. I thought with 24 inch uh, spacing and only doing the half inch USB, it's gonna feel a lot of flex. I do not, and here's the kicker. I have only nailed this on the edge. Um, I've been trying to figure out exactly how I want to go forward with my blocking. I had an idea. So my thought was, go ahead and put this up here. Now I know exactly where my edge is instead of snapping the chalk line. And I can just cut all my 22 and a half inch blocks, get up here and just bend over the edge and nail them in. That's the same thing they did on the roof. But I'm gonna be honest with you. Now that I'm up here, that feels very inconvenient. I'm having to duck down. I'm on my knees. I think it's gonna be smarter to uh, do the blocking from downstairs. You know, uh, but I've got all these rooms and stuff that's gonna kind of interfere with that, but I think I'm gonna feel more comfortable standing up on scaffolding, doing the blocking, then leaning over the edge. So I'm probably gonna finish this run out on the next episode, and then we'll block, and then uh, we'll bring the boards and most likely stagger the seams, and then do our next run of blocking. The uh, engineered plans don't even call for blocking on these edges. Only blocking it calls for is said, just, just put one run of blocking in the middle, and that helps keep the uh, joist from twisting. Well, that wasn't good enough for me. I want blocking on every single edge just so there is no flex, no issues when I'm walking up here or storing some stuff. But as of right now, I'm not even nailed in, which will make this much stronger, and it feels really good. Now, down there, that OSB, I've only got just a couple screws shot in it because my plan is to lift that back up and take it out. I just put it in place so I could butt this piece to it and make sure everything fit right. But uh, I'm going to take that back out. My intentions are to leave no OSB along that back wall due to rain. Now, OSB supposedly is Category 1 rated. Try to err on it, and it can take some moisture, but I don't want it um, getting rained on. And speaking of that... I just got down, pulled the phone out of pocket, and guess what? Tropical Cyclone has just formed in the Gulf, which we've been watching it, and they gave it a 90% chance. And uh, looks like it's gonna head toward Louisiana, kind of West Florida, but uh, looks for sure like we're gonna get some bands off of it. So now I'm gonna rush off to the hardware store in the morning, pick up some more plastic, and uh, try to reinforce this place. I wish I was dried in, but I'm, I'm still realistically a long way from that. I'm not gonna pay nobody to do it for the money, but uh, this is just a risk that we take living in Florida and building this time of year. I could wind up getting a hurricane or something that uh, rip plastic off and blow in here. So that's why I'm wanting to only raise these couple of walls and not have OSB near the edges until absolutely last right before I know I'm gonna knock those walls out, knock that flooring out, and then jump immediately on sheathing the outside. So I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth to try to make things as weather tight as I possibly can. Let me show y'all, this is just what I'm looking for. You see them bones poking out as the meat's pulling back and there's a whole nother bone exposed right there. So I'm fogging y'all out. That is going to be some tender ribs. I personally don't prefer them this tender, but they're going to be good, no doubt. But this is the way Tiffany likes them. When you start seeing all them bones stick out, it's just going to fall off the bone. You can literally pull them right out. All right, so check this out. The garden is still producing squash and zucchini. So Tiffany thick cut some right here. We grilled some the other night. Oh my goodness, it was so good. And we've got that new Everglades seasoning on there. That's the one what looks orange. Oh my goodness. It is so good for vegetables. It's just a low salt uh, No MSG or low MSG one. It's so good. It's our first time trying it, but it's perfect for vegetables Now I know this isn't technically grilling, but they're perfect to do on a gas grill. I love them
There we talk. <clears throat> Alright y'all, excuse the mess. This was not intended to be a cooking video, but I want to show you the final results. Obviously the grilled vegetables look amazing and should taste amazing. Now, let me show you how these ribs. They're a bit hot to touch, but just check this out. Oh wow, just peels right off. Now that's what I'm talking about. Nice smoke ring in it. Wow, way too hot to touch, but I am guarantee you we're gonna cut these ribs up. They're just gonna fall apart. Just look, just falls apart on your finger. So really good stuff there. All right, and to top this meal off, new potatoes, check that out. Tiffany made us some garlic mashed new potatoes and they are so good. I've done tried a few. So smoked ribs, grilled squash and zucchini, and new potatoes out of the garden. There is no better way to end a day than that. Well, I really hope y'all enjoyed this episode. I know it was all over the place, but this is just how our typical day goes. I'm over there working on the house or I'm running the errands first thing in the morning or jumping back and forth cooking in the afternoons. You finally finish up the house, you go work in the garden. That's just lifestyle living out in the country and owning property like this, and I wouldn't trade it for nothing. So Tiffany just got home from work. We're gonna go in there and enjoy this meal. I really hope y'all enjoyed this episode. The house is moving along. We're about to go eat some really good food that I hope will energize me for tomorrow and we'll get some more work done. We're gonna keep an eye on this storm that's coming. I may have some videos of me wrapping the house, worn plastic and kind of protecting everything that we've worked on up to this point. We'll catch y'all on the next episode. It was the extension cord. Now it's air. I'll be right back. <laughs>